as we finish the first, I guess you could say, half week of the season of Lent, our thoughts invariably turn to the first Sunday of Lent. Interestingly enough, the theme of the first Sunday is that of temptation. And as we come to this first Sunday, I always hear as a priest, every year in every parish I've ever been at ever, at least one, usually many more, who always come to me, not asking advice, but more or less approval, over the question of whether or not Sunday counts. And usually, it has to do with whatever they've given up for Lent. Now, I always like to point out, when we give something up for Lent, especially if it's something difficult, it invites temptation. So I tell them, in other words, you are being tempted to take it back on a day dedicated to the Lord. A sacrifice that we, were, we took on to help get us closer to God, invite temptation, whereupon we turn to God for prayer to resist that temptation and invariably grow in prayer and become closer to God. Does it make any sense that on a day dedicated to God is the day in which we give in to temptation? But the reason people ask that question is because they've often confused the practice of giving something up for Lent with the practice of fasting. Now, we fast only two days during the season of Lent. And fasting is curtailing the amount of food we eat. And those two days are Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, the first day of Lent and one of the last days of Lent. But time was when we fasted every day during the season of Lent. This is what we did, not as individuals, but as a community of faith. We fasted every day during the season of Lent, and we abstained from meat every Friday during the course of the year. But now that our days of fasting have been reduced to only two, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, the notion of Sunday doesn't count no longer applies. Because it's when we fasted as a community that as a community, Sunday was not a day of fasting. Because as a community, we were celebrating the resurrection of Christ as we do every Sunday, even the Sundays during Lent. So as we no longer are fasting, people have now taken their individual sacrifices and applied it to the Sunday, when it never has to begin with. Only when we fasted as a community. So I get people every year, Father, I gave up wine, but today's Sunday, so now I can drink the wine. Or Father, I gave up popcorn or video games, but today's Sunday, so I can do what I've given up for Lent. It doesn't matter because it is not a fast. And when you think about it, it doesn't really make any sense. When we give up something for Lent, we will be tempted to take it back earlier. How ingenious it is for Satan to say, it is written, Sunday doesn't count. But does it really make any sense that on a day dedicated to the Lord, is a day we give in to temptation. So if anyone here has someone who asks them that question, here is one of the meanings of which we say, let us go forth to proclaim the gospel. Let us proclaim to them that Sunday does count with our individual sacrifices. Whether we gave up wine or coffee, whether we gave up popcorn or video games, but let us also remember one little stipulation. If we have individually decided that our personal observance during Lent is going to be that we fast every day during Lent, then I need to remind you, Sunday is not a day in which we fast. When the practice is fasting. But when we've given up something for Lent, let us hold fast to that for the complete days of Lent because we didn't give up something for 40 days. We gave up something for Lent. And as I like to remind people, tomorrow will be the first Sunday of what? 
Lent. The next Sunday will be the second Sunday of what? Lent. Lent. And we gave these things up for what? Lent. So let's all be that instrument of that clarification, which unfortunately is more widespread than even I heard when I was in the seminary. But that we enter into and continue through this season of Lent with true sincerity and seriousness in the observances we have engaged in. As a time in which we make sacrifices, not a time in which we make excuses. At a time in which we learn to be stronger Catholics, not stronger lawyers looking for loopholes. Let this be a time of sincere growth for all of us, in which our goal is not to find and weasel our way to the easier way of doing things, but to find and weasel our way to a closer relationship with God and a stronger relationship with one another as his church.